Hello, and welcome to the Iconic Reef Guardians program. This module is designed to provide a foundational understanding of coral reefs and the threats impacting corals throughout Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. Additionally, we will review the actions we can all take to reduce our impact on these diverse yet fragile ecosystems, either in person or from afar. Coral reefs are vibrant, highly diverse ecosystems built by coral, a type of invertebrate animal related to sea anemones and jellyfish. When you think of the word coral, you might picture something like this, or this. These are coral colonies, groups of hundreds or even thousands of individual coral polyps, all connected by a thin layer of tissue that encompasses the entire structure. To build the colony, each coral polyp secretes a calcium carbonate or limestone skeleton, shaped like a cup into which it can retract its soft body and tentacles. As coral polyps multiply, the colony grows in size. If you've ever found chunks of chalky white rocks on the beach, chances are you found parts of a coral colony skeleton. The polyps that build it are long gone. Every coral polyp in the colony is able to reproduce and feed itself using its tentacles. Generally, feeding takes place at night as the soft-bodied animals extend from their limestone cups to feed on drifting organic material. Coral polyps are not very efficient at collecting the food energy they need to survive. To make up for this deficiency, they have developed a symbiotic relationship with an algae called zooxanthellae. Like plants, this algae is able to photosynthesize, converting light into sugar. Zooxanthellae produce more than 70% of a coral's energy needs and play a crucial role in keeping it alive. Not only do zooxanthellae provide food, the pigment of the algae provides the coral color. Yes, when you see a yellow, green, or brown coral, what you're seeing is the color of the zooxanthellae living in the tissue of the coral. Coral polyps are translucent and don't have any pigment of their own. Corals are found around the globe and have a few environmental criteria that need to be met for them to thrive. Most corals like the water to be warm, relatively shallow, with low nutrient levels. Corals are found globally throughout tropical and subtropical waters. They thrive in temperatures between 73 and 84 degrees Fahrenheit, the ideal range for their symbiotic algae, zooxanthellae. The average water temperature in the Florida Keys is 79 degrees. The ocean reaches depths of more than 35,000 feet, but most coral reefs are found in waters shallower than 230 feet. Growing in shallow depths allows sunlight to reach the coral, which is essential for the zooxanthellae to photosynthesize and produce food energy for the coral. In the Florida Keys, the corals are most often located between 5 and 50 feet. Nutrient-poor water means the water is clear and clean without an excess of nitrogen or phosphorus, compounds that are naturally part of any balanced ecosystem. Clear water allows sunlight to reach the coral, which is needed for photosynthesis. Low nutrient levels reduce the abundance of marine plants and types of algae which can become overgrown and outcompete corals for sunlight, sometimes even smothering them. Fertilizing your vegetable garden gives the plants a boost of these nutrients, encouraging them to grow, which is not something that is wanted by slow-growing coral animals. It is important to distinguish between the two different types of corals found throughout the Florida Keys, hard corals and soft corals. Hard corals, like boulder corals and branching corals, are known as reef-building corals, as their polyps produce the limestone skeletons that serve as the structural foundation of the reef. Hard corals are inflexible and do not move and sway with the current. Soft corals, like sea fans and sea rods, do not have a solid skeleton. Instead, their polyps produce small calcium carbonate structures shaped like tiny spikes or jacks that help provide internal support. Soft corals are flexible and will bend and flow with the current. The focus of this module is hard corals. Hard corals come in a variety of shapes and sizes, and while they may look as sturdy as a rock, corals are susceptible to various diseases and environmental stressors. Like us, corals can be infected by different bacteria, viruses, and fungi, often triggered by an external stressor. Remember, hard corals thrive within specific ranges of temperature, pH, and nutrients like nitrogen. Corals become stressed when there are increases in water temperature, changes in water pH, or an influx of pollution from sewage or fertilizers high in nutrients like nitrogen, 
or more specifically, nitrates. These environmental stressors can lead to disease outbreaks. Now that we know what can cause stress to corals, we'll look at the various diseases impacting the hard corals of the Florida Keys. The origins and mechanisms of coral diseases are not well known. As snorkelers and divers, we observe the symptoms of the disease, but where they come from and how different bacteria, viruses, and fungi impact the normal function of coral is still under investigation. The frequency of coral diseases has increased over recent years. Although the exact cause is still unknown, poor water quality and increasing water temperatures are most likely contributing factors. Corals under stress from a degraded environment are more susceptible to diseases including black band disease, yellow band disease, white band disease, white pox patch disease, stony coral tissue loss disease. Black band disease is a bacterial infection identified by white spots or lesions marked by a dark black line that spreads across the colony as the polyps are compromised. It is treated by manually removing the infection or application of antibiotics. Yellow band disease is a bacterial infection identified by yellow blotches that spread outward in a circular pattern as the coral tissue is consumed, resulting in circular lesions. It is treated by covering the infected area with clay or similar to prevent sunlight from reaching the offending photosynthetic bacteria. White band disease is believed to be caused by an assortment of bacteria, but is still unknown. It is identified by a distinct smooth line marking healthy tissue from the white exposed skeleton where the tissue has peeled away. The treatment often involves local application of an antibiotic on the lesions. White pox disease is a bacterial infection identified by irregularly shaped lesions that appear across the coral colony, spreading rapidly. Research suggests the initial outbreak was caused by a bacteria found in human waste. As a bacterial infection, local application of antibiotic is used to stop the spread. Stony coral tissue loss disease is thought to be caused by a combination of bacteria and viruses. However, it is still under investigation. It is identified by rapidly expanding lesions that spread across the colony until no living tissue remains. The treatment involves local application of antibiotics. Learn more about coral diseases from the Coral Disease and Health Consortium. It is not just diseases impacting corals. The appearance of big, bright white corals on a reef is not a welcome sight. These ghostly skeletons are evidence of severely stressed corals. When stressed, corals often respond by expelling their colorful zooxanthellae, revealing the white limestone skeleton underneath their clear tissue. This phenomenon is called coral bleaching, as the corals transition from yellow, green, and brown to bright, bleached white. The leading cause of bleaching events throughout the Florida Keys is an increase in water temperatures due to climate change. Corals are sensitive to changes in water temperature. This is not to say that they cannot handle seasonal fluctuations in temperature. They can. These changes happen gradually over time. What causes stress, and ultimately bleaching, is water temperatures that are significantly above or below normal for that time of year. Research has shown that when water temperatures reach 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit above the highest monthly average, corals become stressed and bleach. This information helps scientists determine when and where bleaching events might take place. For example, in this graph, the highest monthly average temperature, 85.4 degrees Fahrenheit, occurred in August. This means that when water temperatures in the region reach 87.2 degrees or higher, the bleaching threshold is met and alerts are issued. Sustained high temperatures can result in mass coral bleaching events, and in some cases, the loss of an entire reef of hard coral. Water that is too cold can also trigger a bleaching event, such as the one that happened in January of 2010 throughout the Florida Keys, when the water temperature dropped 12 degrees below normal.
While high temperatures are the leading cause of coral bleaching, it is not the only one. As we discussed, environmental stressors such as pollution from sewage and fertilizers, ocean acidification, or the decrease in pH can also stress corals to the point of bleaching. Additionally, extreme low tides can cause corals to be exposed to air for prolonged periods of time, resulting in bleaching. And corals found in shallow water can be overexposed to sunlight, especially when combined with high temperatures, which can contribute to bleaching events. Coral bleaching is a gradual process. As a healthy coral becomes stressed, the zooxanthellae begin to jump ship and the coral begins to look pale and unhealthy. This is known as paling. When a coral colony loses some, but not all of its color, it is considered partially bleached. When all of the zooxanthellae are gone, the coral is considered fully bleached, but the polyps are still alive for a period of time, depending on the species. Eventually, the polyps begin to starve without their zooxanthellae, as they are unable to capture enough food energy to sustain life. Dead coral often looks fuzzy due to marine algae growing on the skeleton. While bleaching may result in the death of all or part of a coral colony, that is not always the case. Sometimes the bleached tissue will survive if environmental conditions return to optimal within a short period of time. However, bleaching is a highly stressful event. While it can occur quickly and is reversible, as it is happening, the coral is more susceptible to disease, which can also result in a failure to thrive. While the appearance of bright white coral colonies is a relatively clear indication of bleaching, there is another sign of corals under stress called fluorescing. Corals that appear fluorescent blue, orange, yellow, or pink are considered bleached. The bright coloration is produced by proteins in the coral and is only visible after the zooxanthellae have left. Fluorescing corals may appear stunning in coloration, but it is an indication of bleaching. White spots and patches on coral can indicate quite a bit about coral health. You can often tell the difference between a bleaching coral versus a coral that is experiencing disease by looking to see if there is a sharp line where the normal coral color stops. If it is a sharp line, it is disease. If it is less sharp and faded, it is bleaching. Additionally, bleaching does not initially result in tissue loss, while disease generally results in tissue loss, leaving the coral skeleton exposed. While disease and bleaching are the most prevalent causes of tissue loss, predation is another. The soft tissue of corals are preyed upon by a variety of reef animals. Parrotfish use their beak-like jaws to scrape the algae-laden tissue from the surface of the colony, gouging out chunks of limestone that is later converted into sand. Fireworms also eat coral polyps, consuming the tissue down to the white limestone skeleton. Coral predators are a natural part of the reef ecosystem, and when corals are plentiful and healthy, the impacts are minimal. If you ever notice a branching coral with white edges or tips, it's a reason to smile. It's a healthy, growing coral. The zooxanthellae just have not filled in the new growth of tissue yet. If you're ever in doubt about what you're seeing, take a photo or two if you're able. Photos can be included as part of the CFAN report. More on that in a bit. Photos will be shared with professionals who can properly diagnose the situation. When mass coral bleaching events occur, they are devastating as they can result in the loss of many hard coral species. Until the 1980s, coral bleaching events occurred once every 25 to 30 years. Lately, they are happening every six years and are expected to accelerate. In July of 2023, the water around the Florida Keys reached temperatures of nearly 100 degrees Fahrenheit, more than 10 degrees Fahrenheit over the highest average summer temperatures. The results were almost immediate as heat stress corals bleached, leaving the reef with ghost-like reminders of what once was. There is good news, not all hard corals bleach. Some corals are resilient to heat stress and can survive unusually high temperatures. We have reached the first opportunity to pause and check for understanding. You are going to review a set of images to determine if the coral is healthy, paling, bleached, dead, diseased. Pause the video and take a moment to review each image. Some images may have more than one issue, so be sure to look carefully to determine the health of the coral in each image. 
When you're ready, continue the video and the answer for each image will be revealed. Every year, about 3 million people visit the Florida Keys, of which an estimated 700,000 dive or snorkel in Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. Think about what brings you here today. Coral reefs are both ecologically and economically important. Corals are keystone species, meaning they support the existence of many other living things, a job that no other species could do in the same way. Coral reefs occupy about 1% of the ocean floor, yet are home to 25% of all marine species. They are estimated to have an annual global economic value of over $375 billion. Healthy coral reefs provide work and income through fisheries and tourism industries, protect coastal environments from erosion and flooding, and support numerous marine and terrestrial food webs, which include more than 3 billion people. Hard corals are the foundation of the reef. When they are lost, the biodiversity of the reef is reduced, and fish and invertebrates leave as the habitat is no longer suitable. Loss of reef biodiversity impacts tourism and commercial fisheries, as well as coastal development. Degraded reefs are susceptible to erosion, which allows for larger waves and storm surges, increasing coastal flooding and accelerating the rate of sea level rise. Projected coral reef degradation in Florida could increase the risk of coastal flooding, costing an estimated $823.6 million a year. You're here. You made the decision to learn more about coral health, and we appreciate you for it. Thank you. While you're in Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, we encourage you to get out there and enjoy all the reef has to offer. Blue Star fishing, snorkeling, and diving tours are available near you. Become a scientist for the day. While you're on the water, take note of anything out of place and report it to CFAN, the Southeast Florida Action Network. CFAN is a reporting and response system designed to improve the protection and management of Southeast Florida's coral reefs. During your iconic reef guardian dives, your instructor will show you how to do this as part of your in-water experience. You can report marine debris, vessel groundings, anchor damage, discolored water, fish kills, coral disease, coral bleaching, and much more from your smartphone by pausing this video and scanning the QR code on your screen. Even if you're not sure about what you're seeing, report it to CFAN, and if possible, include photos to help describe the situation. And remember to wear reef-safe sunscreen. Here are a few more ways you can help protect coral reefs. The factors that drive coral bleaching are global, therefore a global effort is needed to protect and restore coral reefs. There are things we can all do to help preserve coral reefs around the world. Recycle and dispose of trash properly. Reducing potential marine debris keeps it out of the ocean and off the reef. Minimize fertilizer use. Keep excess nutrients out of the ocean and away from coral. Reduce your energy use. Lowering your greenhouse gas emissions reduces the impact of climate change, which is a win for the reef. Conserve water. The less water used, the less runoff generated, which may carry wastewater into the ocean and onto the reef. Be an informed consumer. Your choices in food, vacation spots, drive times, and light bulbs matter and can impact the health of coral reefs around the world. Perhaps the most important one of all, share what you've learned with your friends and family. You never know when you might inspire the next ocean steward. Florida's coral reefs have experienced drastic declines due to a combination of factors, including poor water quality, the effects of climate change, coral disease, and overuse. Over the last 40 years, 90% of the corals that once dominated the reefs of the Florida Keys have been lost. Plans are in place to propagate, grow, and restore various species of coral throughout the Keys, and you can be involved as a volunteer, donor, or educator. To learn more about coral restoration efforts taking place in the Florida Keys, please visit our partners at Coral Restoration Foundation, 
Moat Marine Laboratory, and Reef Renewal. You have reached the final check for understanding in this module. Please pause the video to read each statement and determine if it is true or false. When you're ready, hit play and the correct answers will be revealed. Congratulations on finishing Module 1, Coral Bleaching, What It Is and How You Can Help, from the Iconic Reef Guardians program. For more information related to the topics in this module, please visit Mission Iconic Reefs. To learn more, please check out these sites. Please proceed to the knowledge review. You must score an 80% or above in order to demonstrate mastery. If you do not attain that score, please review this module and then retake the knowledge review.